It's 5.45 p.m. ish, which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. The show is 5.45 live. Joe, I'll spin it uh, your way to tell us a little bit about what's coming up on deck. <laughs> All right. All right. Tonight, Homeland Security dips its toe in Brattleboro's politics. Compass School takes on Hollywood with their annual film festival. And Venus eclipses the sun for the second time in eight years, but not for quite a few more. And on to our select board report. So we're not gonna, uh... Of course not! God, we can't just let them rule our lives. But isn't it the rules of the game? Rules schmools. Right. Rules schmools. Yeah, we'll uh, jump right into it. We do it in 15 minutes. In this case, Joe, we got to do it in uh, less than 10. 10 minutes. So you, you better... 9.12. Uh, you better head into that select board store you were just uh, queuing up for us. All right, then. Homeland Security is now requiring municipalities officially sign on to their National Incident Management Command System, NIC, NIMCS or NIMS, if they are are to seek a variety of federal crisis funding controlled by the nation's highly controversial Department of... Homeland Security. And while Brattleboro informally adopted the practice more than 15 years ago, the select board's decision last night to ratify the town's integration into the system had some local residents spooked. Nowhere in the document does it actually define what an incident is. It doesn't really define what, who, who decides what an incident is. Uh, and, and what happens after an incident. Who takes control. No agreement, no money, as Assistant Town Manager Patrick, Mo West Mo Patrick Moreland put it last night. But for some, the price could be too high, leaving residents wondering what hidden freedoms might be surrendered in the 150-page document issued by Homeland Security in conjunction with their request and prompting Select Board Member David Gartenstein to call for tabling the motion until the end of the week Thursday so that Select Board members could better review the document. The, the protocol, which is used to jump in here, to standardize interagency communication that was implemented most recently during Hurricane Irene. All right, uh, and with that, Joe, we'll uh, move on. Sarah Edwards, she's been a, uh, a representative for Brattleboro for many, many years, 10 years, in fact. She was uh, downstairs in the select board room today as we did a legislative wrap-up with her and uh, her co-Brattleboro reps, Molly Burke and Valerie Stewart. This is what she had to say about her uh, <clears throat> long many years as a, a public servant and her plans in a post public it's been a great 10 years and i look forward now to becoming uh exploring the advocacy side and uh that'll be a real change of pace so moving on uh let's talk venus let's talk astronomy for a second joe uh this is perhaps or, not solely a local story into geeks <laughs> there you go uh now, uh, it's a 243-year cycle that includes four stopovers when the planet Venus uh, eclipses the sun, though a little bit different than a lunar eclipse where it fully blocks the sun. Uh, for some who got super hyped up only to see a little black dot, it may have seemed uh, somewhat inconsequential, but uh, given how few times it comes around, Joe, and that this was right. the last chance anybody had to see it in their own lifetime unless they live... Uh, past uh, 100 and I think 10.5, 112.5 right. years to get to see it again. Right. Uh, BCTV Access Coordinator Frederick Noyce was, uh, got a lift from NASA up into the uh, space station the to take a look at this. Oh, uh, from, the, from the space station, awesome. Here we go. Hey Roland, I'm up here in the International Space Station. And if you can see just behind me here in the window, that is actually our sun. Uh, with some uh, fancy filters over it. And uh, that little dot traversing it is the planet Venus. That's definitely in space, Joe. It, that was it's, good. It's, uh, I would say, purely a coincidence that BCTV has a brand new green screen. There. Oh, absolutely. We'll so, have to get Fred in the studio when he gets back from there. That's huh? right. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look, see if the green screen can be as realistic as it is when he's in space himself. Right. All right, well, uh, a freeform Wednesday as we uh, wing it along Joe here. Um, that's kind of, that's uh, all I got for clip news stories, but 
uh, each uh, each show we do a couple additional things, uh, including couple standards, uh, <clears throat> some weather, traffic. Yeah, all that, all that local good stuff. Items, local calendar. Exactly. So uh, let's jump into our uh, traffic here quickly. Uh, the code, as uh, you can uh, see here, we've got red standstill traffic, green uh, flying, and orange is somewhere in between, heavily congested uh, but moving. As I lean forward here, uh, Joe, you had to try and make it onto this slightly uh, delayed oh, yeah. show. Uh, I think you got to experience up close uh, yourself was, some of this uh, this block of red here. It's amazing how accurate that is because that is the, coming down Canal Street for some reason is backed up up to about where Coosiers is. And uh, it was all clogged up through the triangle coming southbound as well. So I'm not sure. I, I didn't see an accident or anything, but uh, yeah, boy, something had it garbled up. That's for sure. Normally we see a lot less red than this. Usually just between uh, Malfunction Junction and uh, High Street is in the red. But uh, if you're going south down Putney Road, forget about it. Uh, 91 is probably the better way to go. So call your spouse if they're on the way home or if you're getting ready to leave the office or gym and you're watching us. Uh, you can see some sections to avoid, including Canal Street as well. That's our uh, high-tech traffic report. It's powered by Inrix and Beat the Traffic. They've got an app that... Uh, uh, can go onto your phone. Of course, uh, I like to think that uh, you need 545 Live to inform you uh, about traffic as well. Hopefully we don't become obsolete. But uh, given that the circumstances that would provide uh, for somebody to be watching 545 Live and then need to get in their car and drive someplace are uh, probably somewhat small, uh, get that on your phone as well. It's a great help when you're traveling. That's uh, about all I got, Joe, which is good since we uh, we're got a, a bit of a late start. But I want to turn it your way for a second uh, to head back to the newsroom and uh, talk a little bit about some events that are coming up uh, in uh, lieu of a fancy calendar. In lieu of a fancy calendar, I'll lean back to talk into the mic. We do what oh, all uh, go. good citizens can do, <clears throat> and I head to iBrattleBro's master calendar to look up things uh, like uh, what's going on uh, at the uh, Brooks Memorial Library tonight. Uh, which includes uh, how to create uh, digital collections for small libraries. BCTV, uh, longtime prolific producer and occasional 545 Live senior news correspondent Maria Dominguez will be there to tape that. Um, and uh, we're, we're very much uh, looking forward to seeing that. That'll uh, come out next week on BCTV. It's a presentation from Jess Whites, who lives up in Marlboro. She's working for Brooks Memorial Library, and she's the creator of the digital library there. So she'll be talking a little bit about how to access that, how to utilize it, and uh, giving a broad scope on how libraries across the nation can utilize this technology as well. Speaking of what's coming up on BCTV, Joe, the uh, Compass School held their annual film festival which uh, included nine films, uh, and all of them, all those uh, finalists, contenders, are uh, showing on BCTV, packed into one program. If you take a look at uh, BCTV's upcoming program guide, how do you do that? Well, with the precious little time that we have left, I'll put us uh, you can bring it up back there, on, the, on the big screen here for a second so that we can take a look. We're at brattlebrotv.org. We switch on over here where... Uh, Right on the home page at the bottom, there's a, a schedule for both channels coming up. Um, and then if you need to uh, see more for what schedules, have we got you can, uh, you can oh, click in there and take a look that. at uh, the weekly program guide here and, and get a chance to see some of the stuff that's coming up, uh, including 545 Live back in action, as I'm seeing there. Let's uh, jump back for a moment to uh, take a look at what's coming up tonight. Of course, it's Wednesday, so Al Jazeera News uh, shows directly following BC uh, this here 545 Live show. Often uh, it's the high school's UHS TV. And, uh, yeah, I'll throw it your way, Joe, here. We'll call it an in the newsroom. There you go. Command plus plus. Room. Yeah, all right. Now we can see that. We can read that sucker. We got one <clears> minute Us old folks, our eyes go bad, you know. There you go. Come on. <laughs> Let's what see. We got there? Uh, Al Jazeera, the Frogger meets his peeps. Madam Great puppet show there. Nook and knock in, in progress. progress. Democracy now. Wood heat workshop and fair at eight p.m. That's a little bit uh, behind the schedule, but oh, BCTV Open Studio, Strong of the Heifers. When will the Strong of the Heifers be rebroadcast? Oh, it's been it's been rebroadcasting, and it's on BCTV as video on demand, which we were just showing you here. Where do you go awesome. for that? Uh, you're just gonna click on this. Uh, Scroll all the way up to the top. There's a big watch local shows on demand. This is where you can watch uh, 545 Live as well uh, in both standard and high definition. Boy, are we running out of time. Good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to 545 Live. 
And all you have to say is, huh? This would make an excellent blooper. Um, yep, this would. Oh, oh this goes no. the other half of the closet. Okay. It, this is so, like getting pulled up from the floor. Oh, that's what that ripping sound is. So I think what happened is when Olivia jumped up to um, tell Devin to shut the Help. sleep up, um, <laughs> she ran into this. Oh, oh shh! We broke it again. <laughs> sorry, Julia. I'm really, really sorry about that. Okay. Uh, oh, also, for those of you wondering, uh, Julia's currently away. She's out of town. And uh, let us use her house, her, her bedroom closet to do this.